hola, gracias por darle play o click o touch o lo que sea que le hayas dado a este programa, ya sea en video, en YouTube o en audio, en Spotify o donde sea que nos estén experimentando. De nuevo, gracias, gracias por tocar este show. Eh, sentía que era necesario hacer una breve advertencia al principio de que el siguiente programa fue grabado completamente en inglés, quizá no en un inglés muy bueno de mi parte, pero en inglés, y sentía que era necesario un poco pues, mencionarles eso. Eh, la situación era un poco interesante o extraña o particular, donde mi invitada está en Francia, yo estoy aquí en México, y ambos encontramos un lugar común en el inglés, ¿no? Entonces, para todos aquellos que son bilingües o angloparlantes, pues este programa va para ustedes, espero que los disfruten, igual si no son tan duros con mi dicción, o lo mejor es algo que podemos seguir haciendo más adelante y así podemos extender nuestra gama de invitados, ¿no? Si les interesaría ver más conversaciones en inglés, diría en otros idiomas, pero es el único que entiendo, quizá el portugués, pero yo tendría que hablar en español, o el italiano, probablemente siempre creo que el portugués o el italiano los podría entender, no hablarlos, pero quizá, no, no sé, no quiero exagerar tampoco, pero mejor los dejo aquí con mi invitada del día de hoy, espero que los disfruten, y espero pues su retroalimentación en cualquier sección de comentarios que encuentren allá afuera. Así que pues vámonos. Hello everybody, thank you for coming to another show of it's called Encuentros de Cine. The literal translation would be like film encounters or something like that in English. Actually, this is interesting because this is my first English spoken episode, but it's doing it. I'm doing it with somebody from France, so it's very interesting. It's like a mix of, and I'm from Mexico, so it's like a weird combination of languages and cultures. So I hope this is gonna be interesting. And joining me today is Melly, which I, who I found out through YouTube and Instagram, and I know she's like very f passionate about cinema and. I just wanted to talk to her and see where the conversation goes. So thank you again, Melly, for accepting You're welcome. this invitation. So, you know, before we get into your love of movies, because the way I discovered you was through, I think many people found you through a video you did of the Joker scene. Then you recreated the, the Joker dance scene on YouTube, which got a lot of views. So I just uh, want, I wanted to start with that question specifically, what sort of, inspire you or motivated you to do to recreate that scene and specifically uh i, I love the movie uh, basically so uh i i was so uh inspired by the the way he moves the music the the scene itself it's so beautiful at this moment in the movie is it's the key for me in this movie and i love dancing and uh, i always wanted to remake stuff like that and uh, this one was the occasion for it and I tried <laughs> I did my best I'm not a dancer I'm but I love dancing so yeah that's why I wanted to do it because it was so beautiful in the movie so inspiring because you did like a couple other scenes from the movie right I believe uh, I, yeah I, I did uh, the the other dance the bathroom dance uh, It was uh, during the, the containment, uh, the confinement period. So yeah, at the very beginning, and I wanted to try it in a very small room, yeah. uh, 10 meters square. <laughs> 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 and I wanted to see how I, I could do that. So it was a try. <laughs> and what was the response from people? I saw that you got a lot of comments, a lot of likes, a lot of views. It depends. Uh, some like, some don't. Uh, it's <laughs> yeah. always like that anyway. But as I'm not, a, uh, given that I'm not a professional, uh, some really don't like it. Think it's not uh, not well done. <laughs> But some others say it's very good, and uh, yeah, I'm happy about that. I take all the good comments, and others I let go. <laughs> Yeah, because it was very, that scene was very interesting because I think many people it inspired many people to do it. I I always like to think what scenes from cinema are gonna become classics uh, with time, and that's a scene that became like an instant classic from the moment it came to the screens. Don't you think? For sure, for sure, it's a it's a scene that will stay for ages. I think. And it was very interesting because I don't know if around the world it was the same, but. I live here in Mexico, in Tijuana. It's very close to the United States. So mm -hmm. in the news, everybody was worried that the movie was going to motivate people to do crimes or 
or stuff like that. But the only thing that they motivated was to do that scene or recreate other scenes from the movie. So I think it's I think something more positive came out of the movie instead of what everybody was worried about. Yeah, because I can understand the the thing to be worried about, but in the in the same time, I think it, it's it's I don't know how to explain. There is violence, but they, it's not the point of the movie. The violence is not the point, and I think people get that. Yeah, and I think people get too confused. Sometimes I think the masses get confused that people are not going to understand the message of certain movies. Like, mm -hmm. I think other filmmakers, like Tarantino and other filmmakers, always get, oh, they're too violent. But if you understand how it's presented, then I don't think it's going to inspire people to do anything. Oh, and it's more, there is something so creative in this movie. For Tarantino, it's, it's the fun of, uh, of blood, of things like that. It's to, to have fun. But for the Joker, it's more serious and creative. What were your favorite movies from last year, if you don't mind me asking? So the, the Joker was one <laughs> of yeah. them. Uh, Parasite yeah. uh, was a very uh, weird movie, but yeah, I, wa I was very into it, just like the Joker. Uh, I was so in the movie and it's so well done. The actors are great. The direction, the suspense, everything in this movie is very well thinking and... Um, you yeah, know, I really enjoyed this movie. Uh, for the comedy, uh, Knives Out. Oh, that was great too, yeah. Daniel Craig, I, I liked this one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I did a list, I think. Um, oh, yeah, and 1917 is a great yes. one. Uh, I didn't want to watch it. And when I came out, I was... Wow, I was so moved by this movie and to like in one or two shots, it's crazy. And why why do you, you didn't want to see it? I don't know, because, yeah, it was about war and I saw many movies about war, always the same. And I wasn't convinced by the fact that it was a one or two shot movie and uh, they did it very well. Yes. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of war movies either, but I was more interested in the filmmaking when I was hearing it's one shot or it's like a shot like cut together to pretend that it's one shot. I was okay, I, I, I'm interested now. And when I saw the movie, it was the same experience. I got like too wrapped around the, the film mm -hmm. and it was also one of my favorites from, from last year. It's a it's, very great one. Yeah. My favorite one, I think it was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I think that was my uh, yeah, favorite. This one is, uh, yeah, it's a good one. I've forgotten this one, but yeah, yeah, yes, I loved it. I'm not very fan of Tarantino, but this one is good. Yeah, I think, I mean, as, I know it sounds like a cliche, but uh, he is one of my favorite directors ever. I think. Well, from since he started making movies. Yeah, he did, he did some good stuff, but it's not the kind of movie yeah. that really necessarily talked to me. What would be your like the type of movie that you would like? If they're like uh, specific genre or filmmaker or something like that. Uh, filmmakers for a long time I had Tim Burton. Okay. Uh, I love Johnny Depp in many yeah. or all his roles. I think he's very good. I liked uh, him at the beginning. I think he that he later started making weird choices, but. Now, now it's less good. I, I know, I know. But it was, it was very good. It used to be. Yeah. Uh, I love Woody Allen's movie, but depends the the character of Woody Allen. I have some issues with him, but his movies are quite nice. Yes. Um, I, I like the one, the a rainy day in New York, or something like that. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, yeah. I saw it too last year. It was good. So uh, I um quite large about movies uh, I like f fantasies but I love I love good American comedies um, things who make you think about real problems too uh, like uh, like the Joker like um, which one bombshell 
with oh, yeah, uh, Charlie Theron, Nicole yeah. Kidman, this one, this kind of movie. And I, what I was going to tell you, what did you thought about? Oh, I forgot the movie I was going to ask you about. When you were talking about oh Tim Burton, about his latest movies like Dumbo or the thing he's been doing with Disney, because I I don't think they're bad, but they're I just don't like them the same way that I liked his earliest movies. Dumbo, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I was expecting something very bad, and it was better than what I thought. So I was quite happy with this one. Uh, but it's from yeah Dark Shadows. It's not uh, the same as it used to be. There is the genius is not there completely. There, I would say. Yeah. It's, there is still his his uh, his hand, but not as good as it used to be. Although the the one I really liked was the one I always forget the name. It's very long with Eva Green, with like a school of the peculiar children. Of pecul yeah, that one. I really like yeah. that one. I don't think it's as good as his classics. Mm, no, go, I, I, go on. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a good one, but it could have been better. Yeah, that's yeah, what I. I think it's the last one. I mean, Dumbo, I, I liked it because he stretched the story. I, mm -hmm. I have the impression that you're a big Disney fan because you do a lot of Disney videos. But I like that the film, like the first half, is almost like the original cartoon. But then the second half is its own story. So I found that a bit interesting too. Yeah, me too. Me too. And one and and actually I will ask you about that. What you do a lot of Disney recreation scenes that are very fun, very, very funny for your Instagram. So I just wanted to ask you what does motivate you to do that sort of, of stuff? I wanted to do that with a friend at first, but we never did had the occasion for doing it so i decided to do it on my own and yeah. uh, i enjoyed it for the during the, the the containment because i had nothing to do and this was the occasion to do something and uh, I, I love disney it's a universe that i really enjoy uh, i would love to work for them uh, and yeah it's the humor the the art around it it's so many things uh, it's, it's a big uh, a big thing <laughs> yeah when when you say you would like to work for them would it be like in the animation or as acting or in what area uh, in the creative uh, something creative like uh, for the um, the screenplay or something mm -hmm. like that or for the the stories around the disney park uh, they they are they are, they are imagineers is the name uh, they invent stories about attractions and stuff oh, yeah. like that and I think it could be so fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I like when they try to do original things in movies, especially with the cartoons or the animated stuff, because I'm not a big fan. I don't I don't know about you when they're doing remakes of their old animated movies. Me too. I, I like some of them because they look good, but others I just what was the point of doing this movie like The Lion King? I don't know if you're a fan, but I, uh, yeah, that was terrible. I hated it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. And and I'm not a big Disney fan, but I remember them from when I was a kid and I saw a lot of them and it's like, why are they doing them again? They already exist. Yeah, it's already good and still children like them. So yeah. I don't understand why, uh, as you say, some of them are good, but not all of them. <laughs> no, I really like what Cinderella. I think that's one I really liked. Oh, you do? I didn't. I yeah. didn't like this one. I I liked it because I thought that was the thing they were going to do, like do them very different, because it's very different from the animated one. Oh, yeah. Well, but, that, af yes. but after that, they started to do it very similar, like Beauty and the Beast and Dumbo. And and mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, they have like good things. I like them because I like fantasy a lot. That's like one of my favorite genres. So I see them like fantasy movies, but I don't, I still don't get the point of doing them again. True, true, it's not necessary. <laughs> yeah, and I'd rather them doing the original Pixar stuff they do or other stuff they do for kids, but they're original stories. Yeah, originals are, are great. I, I like 
the very old Disney when it was uh, handwork, not yeah. computer work. Uh, after um, the the prince the frog princess, after this one, I like them, but it's not the same kind of magic, the same hand. No, I, I mean, yeah, no, I know it's different. I also when I see like CGI movies or car or computer made movies like Toy, Toy Story, I'm not a big fan because I think they're more for kids than for me. But I appreciate sort of the idea of them doing, of pushing like the the art right of the craft. Because when I see like the trailers for Frozen and stuff like that, I never see the movies, but I think oh, it, it's good that they are trying to do to pushing the technology that every time it looks better than before the, the visually it's very beautiful yeah. it's very beautiful they are wonderful things but i think now the stories and the humor is get is getting lost yeah and not lo not so long ago i saw the original i hadn't seen it in many years the sleeping beauty one the, the original cartoon and i really liked it it's the style yeah, of animation it's very beautiful yeah i i never maybe i never saw it as a kid that when i saw it i mm -hmm. because i was going to see the new maleficent movies and i said well i want to watch the original to prepare myself yeah. for the movies and i really liked the art it was like very medieval and old old school mm -hmm. like very old and yeah, they, they did a, they did a lot of research uh, the artists uh, was uh, very into this this period of uh, middle age there is very really something about the trees, uh, square square trees, things yeah. like that, and yeah, it's very a good work. And I feel like they never now they never do stuff like that. Everything looks more like oh. similar. Yeah, that that's the problem about computer now. They they have the the same trees, the same kind of stuff, and they, they don't work about the the visual, the arts of stuff. Yeah. And also, I want to ask you because I, in your Instagram page, you used to do reviews of movies mm -hmm. or critiques of films. But like I saw, like a lot of them. But then suddenly, I feel like you stopped doing them. So I yeah, wanted to ask I, you about that. I, I left Paris, and I don't have any more good cinemas around around me, theaters and stuff like that. So unfortunately, I stopped. It wasn't the most exciting thing I did, but it interested people to have some reviews uh, because I tried to be neutral in my uh, opinions and stuff to not reveal too much, to not spoil people. Yeah. Uh, that was the thing that people liked. And I, I should do more, but for now, yeah, I will have a few months without, unfortunately. Yeah, and how you been doing without? I'm get well. The whole world has been going through the same thing with cinemas closed. Uh, just like like three or four days ago, cinemas have just opened here where I live, but I don't know mm -hmm. what's the situation over there. Uh, in, in France, it they reopened uh, a month ago. Okay. Uh, and uh, we we can go but you know you have to be separate from people one seat yeah. uh but uh i did uh, i went just once from uh, from then and yeah i i miss i miss that <laughs> i miss that yeah i've been thinking if going back or not because everybody's telling me that don't go but i think like should i risk myself and go yeah, and watch a movie question. that's really tricky Specifically because there's no new movies. I saw the like the the movies they're screening and there's nothing yeah, really that interesting. Yeah. What did you say? Sorry. It's, it's all the movies from before the. Ah uh, yeah, from, yeah. There are a lot of old movies. Well, movies huh, that that came from a couple of months ago, and also like some straight to video Nicolas Cage movies that I'm really not <laughs> interested in, in watching. Yeah. <laughs> and. But I'm hoping that eventually they're going to have, like, I just saw the news that the new Christopher Nolan movie is going to re be released mm. internationally first. So I'm hoping that it comes here to cinemas yeah. in Mexico. It would be nice. That would be a good a good movie to, yeah. to watch. There are yeah. some good movies. They are coming bit by bit, but we have to wait. And, and you don't watch a lot of movies, like, online or 
like in online the, yes i i have netflix i have this kind of things but uh or just tv sometimes we have good stuff on sundays and mondays but yeah i don't know to, if i should do reviews of old movies uh i don't know well that, that it just depends if if you want to do them right because i think everybody i mean i i really enjoyed them and i actually i like because you you do you did like american movies in english and you did french movies in french so it yeah. was interesting because the other ones i didn't understand but the ones you did in english i really enjoyed because it was that's actually one of the reasons that got me following you and interested because i thought you were going to do a lot of more of them yeah. but i will i will try to to do more uh, i will try but yeah I w it was quite a, a tough period for me so now i'm getting a bit uh, cooler so maybe i will do more of them <laughs> yeah it's i mean everything i think many people think it's easy to produce stuff for online because everybody thinks well you just turn the camera on and shoot yourself but it, I mean, it's a long time to do just for a few minutes yeah it takes a lot of work especially for example i when i do this podcast i've been people telling me well you just talk to other people then you cut it together and you edit it yeah but it takes time and always with the scheduling issues and and you know i mean it happens there's a lot of things that go wrong so it, mm -mm. it's not easy especially when you do it Or like myself, I don't do this for a living. I do this for fun because I enjoy it. I like talking to people, to yeah. strangers that like cinema. So I think it's fun to explore those things. No, it's it's very nice what you do. And uh, as you say, it takes a long time to to get to to do the editing and everything. It's it's a it's a hard work. People don't realize that, but yes, it takes a long time. Yeah, I think because it usually gets like confused. I don't know if you're on TikTok or something like that, but everybody sees like that type of content oh. and they see, oh, it's easy. You're just like dancing in front of a camera or something like that. And, and you sort of have to explain that. No, it's very different. It looks, might be like the same, but it's it's different type of, of stuff. Yeah, sure. But yeah, TikTok is easy. Uh, I mean, I never tried, but I see people around me who are doing it and... <laughs> Yeah, this kind of stuff are quite easy, but to do real editing, you know, not that much. <laughs> but it's very strange. I mean, I was actually gonna, gonna was going to ask you if you you did TikTok because the type of videos that you produce, I think they were they would sort of fit over there. But I I find it like a very strange, very strange place. I don't know about you. Yeah, I don't I don't like it. I don't know. I tried really quickly, but. Uh, I don't know. It was not my thing. I'm old fashioned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the thing because there's always, every time a new app comes up, I try to, to find out what it's about. And then I'm like, well, they, there's like new ways to tell things. I don't know. St I don't know how somebody's going to use it to tell stories. Maybe if they're, if it's going to be used like that, because of it, when YouTube or Instagram were created, they were not intended for, what many people use them today and but now people tell stories through them so maybe eventually tiktok is gonna be a place yeah maybe maybe sometimes it's interesting some people do good stuff but for me it's quite not large enough i mean and it's difficult to talk about this year because as you've said there's not many movies because i like to ask uh, my guests what are the favorite movies they've seen this year but i don't know if There are specific movies that you saw in 2020 that that you like. Yeah, it's it's tough because uh, I it's more some series and stuff like that because uh, I I'm not very into series, but with this period I yeah. I I watched some and uh, some movies, but yeah, it's. It's, as I said, the Joker, Parasite, 1917, but it's more the year the just before. Year, yeah. It's, yeah, so... So a series, maybe you can talk about, recommend, like a series, maybe? that. Uh, there is the, the one that many people like, uh, la, the Casa de Papel. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've This one is, 
is very good. The, the two first seasons are great after the third and the fourth. Not that much. It's always the same after. Uh, but the, the first and the second are very, very good. Um, there is such a suspense. Uh, I thought I would get bored because it's always in the same place. Yeah. with the same characters but no it's always different and there is such a tension uh, i really enjoyed it that that happens like a lot with sometimes like series when the first season becomes like a hit and they start to stretch it over many seasons and it stops being fun that's when i that yeah. happened to me with stranger things i i don't know if you're a fan but i liked the first season it was it was like a fun but then the second third and i was like I think they're stretching the story. The first the... season of Stranger Things. Yeah, I heard about it. I, I think I watched a few episodes, but I wasn't into it. Yeah, I think I, the first season, I think it was good. But then when I tried to watch the second, I felt like they didn't have no story to tell, but they had to do it because the first one was like a huge success. So it, I, yeah. I didn't really like it. And it's especially after for children or teenagers, they they like it, but uh, for yeah. adults, not that much. Yeah. Yeah, it's very it's very strange. I it, I there's not a lot. I'm trying to think about new series that maybe I've enjoyed, but I'm also uh, yeah, not. In terms of new series, uh, I there watched... is one that I don't remember the name, but I watched one quite old but uh it's a animated one uh Jap japan one japanese one um the uh what's the title titan attack titan i attack something like yeah, that yeah i've heard of it but i've never seen it and it's a very good one i uh, was very surprised it's not really my kind of uh, movie because it's quite violent <laughs> yeah. but i really enjoyed it uh, and i really want to see uh the, the other seasons. So you you I for, from where I get you don't really like violent movies. I suppose I suppose. But sometimes when it's well done, like the Joker or this series, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I need to have a, a reason for it, not just to be free. Yeah, but if you think that sometimes movies have a lot of violence that's not necessary, do you yeah hear? yeah. It happens a lot, I think, and uh, for young people, I don't think it's a good uh, idea because sometimes uh, re uh, age restriction is not enough controlled, and I think it, it could be dangerous. That that's what I I find strange because sometimes there's restrictions with movies that they don't let kids see them, but then when it comes to television, there are TV shows like The Walking Dead or Game of Thrones, which are super violent television and everybody i see people of all ages watching them and i find it very strange that there's like no res there's less restriction on television because you can see it in your home and nobody's like yeah uh, watching what everybody's seeing so i i feel like there's like the most popular content usually is also very violent so i, I find that very strange yeah yeah me too me too and I mean, sure, it's fantasy, but sometimes I th I I like to believe that people can tell the difference because I can tell the difference. But you know, sometimes there's people that don't. Especially for young people, because they they have their imagination. Children are really focused on this, on the imagination, and I think it's not always good. Uh, I know children; they don't mind. They they like. Uh, horror movies or this kind of stuff, but I'm not convinced that it's really good for young children. This should be more controlled. It, I think it's difficult to tell because I remember when I was younger, I saw a lot of horror movies when I wasn't supposed to see, like <laughs> Friday the 13th or Halloween. Or yeah. I feel like those movies were around the house and I watched them. And I don't think they hurt me, but I... It, as you say, different people react different ways. Mm -hmm. I think the only way maybe they affected me is that I became a huge fan of horror movies. But beyond that, I don't think like it, like it affected me in any other way. 
Yeah, it's good. Uh, me, me, for example, I'm quite uh, scared of everything. So when I watch yeah. horror movies, I'm, when I was a teenager, it was okay. But now <laughs> I'm quite, uh, no, I don't, I don't really like scary, scary stuff. But when it's well done, it's nice. Like uh, the old movie, The Shining. Oh, yeah, it's great. something. It's very, very beautiful movie. Did you see the so sequel? Yeah. Did you see the sequel, Doctor Sleep of The Shining? Yeah, not bad. Uh, but um, I wasn't disappointed because I didn't expect did anything. But something is missing. I don't know what. There is something missing to be a very good movie. I I enjoyed it a lot actually, but it's it was. Well, I liked it really. Yeah. I really liked it, and I recommend it. Yeah, because I feel like it was very difficult to make a sequel to an original work of art, mm -hmm. which the original, I also believe it's wonderful, but also like to continue the story on from the book and all, all of that. So I feel like Mike Flanagan really did a great job in connecting. Yeah, no, he did a great job, yeah. Yeah. And other movies like Midsommar, stuff like that, have you seen them? Did you like them? I heard about them, but no, I, I was too too scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's I wanted to know because I feel like horror movies are like two. There are like two type of horror movies. There are the ones like are very like gruesome or horrifying, like you say, and there are like others like Midsummer that not really, but they are more like psychological and like get like into your head or hereditary movies like that. I don't know if. But I heard it's a very good movie. Yeah, I really liked it a lot. I I think that's the genre genre I watch most for I'll, of movies. I mean, like Suspiria and stuff like that. I, I really enjoy it. Huh? Uh, the one that I also, I also like. Uh, there was the. Did you see the French movie? I don't know how how it's called the original title, but in English it was retitled Knife Heart. With Vanessa Paradis, um, it was uh, yeah, like yes, a knife, yes. knife through the heart, or something like that. Yes, yes, I, I, I see the one you you talk about. Uh, I think I watched it. Yes, with weird colors. It's there are a lot of colors in this movie. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, uh, but. I liked it, I know, but I should watch it again because I have just few memories from it, like in a in a dance room or something like that. Yes, uh, a, a dancing, the car scene. Uh, I remember so stuff, but it, it was interesting. And I I love Vanessa Paradis anyway. Yeah, yeah, I, I really liked the movie too because I I also had like the same experience because I watched it. I watched it at home first because it came to video first and then a couple of months later I thought that's the type of movie that never gets to cinemas here in Mexico but it, I found it like on a screen I said well I'm gonna watch it again because I the first time I yeah. saw it I never knew if it was real or I just dreamt like half of it I, yeah I mean, it's hard to, to tell but I found that interesting that it's like a very dreamlike movie that puts you like in a state of sleep so when i yeah, saw it again in the, yeah when i saw it again in the theater i had like the same experience but i was more focused and i mm -hmm. actually really liked it it was one of my favorite movies of that year and so it's and the the director did other gr good stuff it's not the the first movie i like about this director unfortunately i don't remember the name but he does a lot of things like that, not very um, real. Uh, quite, I, I like this kind of movie, not like the others, like very ovni. Yeah, yeah. It's Jan Gonzalez, the director. I think I've never seen his other movies, but this is the first one I see from him, and it was very, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think you should like others movie, other movies. Uh, I think he did. Uh, if I translate it, uh, Midnight Meetings. I don't know if it's the, the title, yeah. Midnight Meetings. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's weird, uh, but the same. I, I really enjoy the, the characters. They are all 
with a, a personality and uh, around the not in in uh, into the out of the planet i would say <laughs> like <laughs> <Yeah>. extraterrestrial <laughs> Yeah, but in in the movie, I'm, the, this one really reminded me. I don't know if you're familiar with a French director called Jean Roland. It's like a French director from the seventies that did a lot of exploitation vampire movies, like very art house. That's I, I rec that's he's one of my favorite directors. And this movie reminded me a lot of that style, which again is very dreamlike, like you don't a bit surreal. You don't really know what's happening, and I. That's I also like a lot of that that type of of movies. Right? Yes. I, I didn't get the last part. Sorry. I, I would like to hear about this director. Yeah, it's he he died in two thousand ten, but he did movies from sixty nine to all the seventies in the eighties. Mm, but now I don't think so. Yeah, he. And he was never really very much celebrated. I think I, I love his movies. I might they might not be for everybody, but I think I think he never really got recognized for the type of weird movie he did, but I, I really liked him a lot. I mean I would say he's my favorite director ever, really. <laughs> so it's very But I'm interesting if it's like the the same kind of movies that this one we were talking about. Yeah, I mean, it's not the same, but he did a lot of like, it was like very like vampires, a little bit like erotic cinema. I like a lot of that stuff from the 70s, like European 70s horror movies. They have like a very specific feeling that I don't find like in any other type of cinema. I don't really know what it is, but it, I like it a lot. It's interesting. Do you have like a bit like favorite movies from like classics or? Like weird classic movies. Not weird, but I like uh, um, French. Um, what they call the Nouvelle Vague, yeah. with Godard, uh, Truffaut. They are. I don't know how to explain. They they are. They have something like uh, very poetic, very real, but not. Uh, in the, the the way of speaking, it's quite uh, theater like, but that's what I like. I like when actors are this theater thing, yeah. and uh, um, musics are wonderful in this kind of movies, uh, directions and stuff like that. Uh, they are slow, slow movies, not very much action, but that's what's in interesting because it's all in the dialogues. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, they inspired a lot of filmmakers that came later. That's the interesting part sometimes, that everything that happened with the Nobel bag, they, they, they did like a lot of. They were they were strange in a in a in a way. I mean, not so strange, but the the way sort of they crafted the movies and the editing and how they played with a lot of stuff. I feel like a mm -hmm. lot of filmmakers from after took many things from that, and now. Maybe it's like a bit normal, but it wasn't back then. Yeah, they, they as you said, they inspired a lot of people. Yes, like... And uh, not only from France, from other parts of the world. Yeah, even when you see movies like La La Land or stuff like that, you see the influences all over there from French cinema, from classic stuff. Yeah, it's and a music movie I really love. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fine. I'm not saying it, it's wrong, maybe, but it... I find interesting how when you see the influences of old movies in newer movies, right? Yeah, yeah. In Sometimes it's too much the same. They they not they are not invented <laughs> stuff, but uh for La La Land I think it's quite uh clever. Yeah, and, and that's when you realize when a director really likes that, that thing, or sometimes they're just imitating. Sometimes you see things or movies but you don't feel like the director really loves yes, he did. it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. He just did it, I don't know, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. but not because he really liked that type of movie. And I feel like Damien Chazelle, all his yeah. movies have to do with classic movie and j music and jazz and all that. And I feel yeah. like he really likes it. I don't... Yeah, we feel the passion of... Uh, yeah. 
even the movie he did about space, First Man. I don't know if you saw it, but yeah, yeah, it it felt like an old movie. So it, even though it was new, but it had a lot of things of classic space uh, movies. So that's why I really he, he's also one of the new of the newer filmmakers. He's one of my favorites. Yeah, it's good, and uh, it's good to and uh, and smart because he's quite uh, we don't see him all the time on tv and quite discreet yeah he yeah that's, what, that's, that's what i like about him that's right he did a tv show for netflix i i haven't seen it but i i don't know and i haven't even read if it's good or not or like a mini series oh, for netflix called the eddy it's about like a job a jazz club, actually. I'm talking about jazz. Yeah. Oh, I, I feel it's it like a <laughs> stuff that happens in a, around a jazz club or something like that. I, I don't. I haven't seen it, but I feel like what I've seen the trailers and stuff. It looks like it has all his style. Cool. I think I will watch that <laughs> soon. Yeah, I, I had it like in my list to watch it later, but I never really got around to watching it. <laughs> yeah, I know because I'm I'm really trying to watch a lot of new movies that I'm coming out on video, like Palm Springs or Relic or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That I know that they are never going to come to to theater, so I'm I might as well watch them uh, on video online. So we're we're gonna start wrap, wrapping it up again. Thank you for for joining me in this strange these strange days. And yeah. talking a bit about movies, it's it's sad that there's not a lot of we can talk about movies on cinemas, but maybe that's going to come back one day, right? Or that's coming back soon, rather. Yeah, I hope we can all go to the movies and do other things without being with the mask and stuff like that. I hope life will be normal again soon. Yeah. Is there a specific movie that was was supposed to come out this year that you were really excited to watch? Uh, there, there was one I was supposed to watch just before these days happened, uh, but I could watch it just after, so I saw it. It was a French movie. Uh, if I translate it, it's A Mermaid in Paris. Oh, yeah. And uh, I was waiting for this movie because uh, I, uh, I read the book it's ba it's based on the book so i enjoyed the book and the movie is uh, as good as the book and uh, because i love mermaids but there are not a lot good uh, good movies about this topic and this one is cute uh, with good music with colors very work about um, the the sceneries the um, the the clothes and everything costumes it's very there is a universe yeah and i was very waiting this movie so i was very happy to see it after three months of waiting yeah. uh, but now uh, uh, yeah i don't follow anymore uh, i i should i should do it but uh i know there are many good movies coming soon but unfortunately i could not tell you one yeah, that's not bad. Uh, yes, I heard one about. Oh, it's a French one with a good actor about um, Gustave Eiffel, the one who did uh, the t t Eiffel Tower. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm waiting for this movie. I'm, I'm really. This that's like a French movie, you, you say? Yeah, I think it's a French movie because I saw a French actor in it. Yeah. But maybe it's uh, international. I don't know. Sometimes there are many countries on the yeah. movie. That's what happens sometimes because I feel like other countries that are not uh, the United States, we get a, we get our own movies. For example, I don't think a lot of Mexican movies go to France or are they? No, unfortunately, it's only in small cinemas and stuff. Yeah. Uh, in Paris, we can have sometimes uh, the opportunity to watch them, but uh, not in the big cinemas. It's too bad because uh, I, I like uh, movies from all the world, around the world. And I think it's the same situation uh, on reverse, that there are not a lot of French movies that actually get here. 
if they're not like like really big. That's what I was surprised when the movie I was telling you about, the Jan Gonzalez movie, came because that's not the type of movie that usually gets here. So I said I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it, even though I had already seen it, just to to see it again. I was just about to ask you if you have one movie that you are waiting to watch. Well, there's a lot because I I see all time of all type of movies. So I like you know I was hoping for the new Christopher Nolan one, the Wonder Woman movie. I I really like the the first one. Oh uh, yeah, I like the first one. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's coming out, but Dune, the Denis Villeneuve Dune. I I was really I love that director too. So I was really hoping. I'm hoping for that movie to come out on December. What else is coming this year? Those are like three that I remember. I like the Marvel movies too. So I, I there was... are many that I want to that I hear about, but, that I heard about, but uh, now I don't remember. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, those are there are many others that I actually don't remember either. A lot of horror movies that I was expecting, like Candyman. I don't know. There's, there's. I like to follow a lot of movie news and movie or movies uh, release dates and all that stuff. So I, I'm just seeing them being pushed and pushed and pushed. Maybe we'll get It's problemed. <laughs> I think what's gonna be very interesting is like the next year, 2021. It's gonna be every weekend. There's gonna be like a new movie, new interesting movie yeah. to watch because. Yeah. All the movies that didn't come out this year, plus the ones that already were scheduled for the next year, I feel like it's gonna be a very interesting year. We we'll have a lot of movies. We <laughs> maybe too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and some because sometimes I there is this. I try to go to the movies every Friday. That's sort of like my ritual. Like every Friday, I try to go to see a new movie. Whatever type of movie it is, I. It's usually like a release, a new release. But now in in the next the next year is gonna be like there are going to be like three or four options every weekend. I feel so. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I feel when like are the, the release uh, in uh, in uh, in Mexico. When uh, when are they? Which day? What day? Of which movie? Uh, when a movie comes out in the in the theaters. Uh, is it on uh, in France? It's Wednesdays. Oh, here it's Fridays. Fridays. Oh, that's why you go to you know, oh, yeah, Fridays. Yeah. yeah, it's sometimes yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah sometimes it's Thursday on late night, like in midnight, and mm. then it's on all screens on Fridays. But yeah, there there was a time where they uh, were on uh, on Wednesdays, but they changed it a long time ago. It's like in London, uh, in England. I think uh, it's Friday too. Yeah, in the United States, um, it also it's on on Fridays. But I think it's the best day because it's it's close to the weekend and everybody goes. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But I mean, Wednesday you get to see it earlier, so that's also good. If yeah, you, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you have the time, right? But well, yeah. So thank you again for. Joining me in this podcast might be a might have been a little bit weird, but I had fun doing it. I don't know about you. Uh, yeah, me too. It was fun. So maybe later when movies come back to theaters, maybe we'll try to do it again and talk about a new release. Yeah, it would be nice. <laughs> okay. Well, so and thank you for inviting me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll do it here on on the air so everybody sees that I'm inviting you to to do it again if you're. You're interested, and I don't know yeah. if you want people to follow you on social media or anything specifically that you would like to to share. Um, uh, and Instagram uh, mainly. Okay, but okay. can you say what's your your handle? Your. Uh, so <laughs> I don't even remember. Okay. It's Melly Bishop yeah. on Instagram. Melly Bishop and uh, on YouTube, I don't even remember. Maybe the same well, or Melly Todd. Yeah, I will find them and put them somewhere in the. Yeah, if you have the link, it would be better. <laughs> yeah, I will put them down there. But so. my name is Melly Bishop on Instagram. Yeah. 
Okay, so, well, that's going to be it for today's show. Thank you for joining us. Please follow, subscribe to the channel and everything like uh, you do. You can follow me also on Twitter and Instagram and all that at arroba brijandes. brijandes. I'll say it in Spanish because it's, it has no translation, but uh, mm. at brijandes, you can follow me there and, and you'll get all the news. And every time we upload a show, we do two shows a week, one on Tuesdays and one on Fridays. So I hope you subscribe and you'll get notified every time a new show comes up. Once again, thank you and we'll see you next time.